Oh, we're live now. That, that always, uh, always catches me off guard. Well, they just say, uh, hail to the victors, and Michigan sure was victorious tonight. Um, hello, I am Ryan from the Sports Carnage Podcast. The link for the podcast, if you're watching our Facebook show right now, um, you can find like the link to our Facebook page in the description right here. Uh, but if you haven't already, make sure you go subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, on um, Spotify, and Podbean as well. That's the Sports Carnage Podcast. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube after, we'll have links to all that stuff down in the description below. So go like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, Michigan and Washington. A game where Michigan started out, I think, before the season as like a one-point underdog and then ended up being uh, basically a touchdown favorite um, by, by the time the game started. So a big swing, and you could see why it was a big swing, you know, if you made it through watching watching this game. Um, Michigan had 343 yards of rushing offense and had two, two guys go over 150 yards uh, and ran the ball 56 times. So no secret what they wanted to do, uh, and they came out there and they accomplished it, obviously. Um, so really dominant performance for Michigan on the ground. And then on the flip side of that, they held Washington to only 50 yards rushing on 32 carries. Uh, Washington ran the ball probably way more than they should have. Um, but for, for 1.6 yards a carry, and I know some of those yards get you know negated because of sacks and college is weird like that. Um, but still, Washington probably ran the ball uh, or tried to run the ball, you know, too many uh, too many times, um, and it didn't seem like Michigan could really run the ball uh, enough with the uh, with the success that they were able ha- able to have, um, you know, kind of going for them. And it was a uh, you know I, I, again obviously like a really dominant game. Um, I'm not sure how much you learned about Michigan. Let me pause this Pizza Hut commercial. Uh, just being that, you know, what, you know, you don't really know, I guess, how the passing game looks. And if you can run the ball for 343 yards every time, it doesn't really matter uh, how the passing game looks. And that's why I understand, you know, kind of where where Michigan was coming from in this game because you couldn't be stopped on the ground. So don't, you know, don't stop going to it, basically. Right. Um, now, I was talking with some of my friends who are Michigan fans, and they were uh, a little bit frustrated just with the play calling. Um, and that, you know, they weren't throwing, uh, a lot and that they were, you know, they thought they were probably putting themselves in a couple of different positions to, um, not, you know, like not advantageous positions. And then Michigan would really just be able to run their way out of it. But, you know, how I saw it was if you're going to run like that, you just, you just keep running. You just keep pounding the rock. There's obviously way less chance of a turnover. Um, if you're going to be running the ball as opposed to throwing it, you're able to control the game uh, way better. And, you know, I think there's less area for really, you know, penalties, holdings, um, things like that when you're running the ball. It just kind of simplifies the game. And I think uh, I think that's the approach Michigan was going for. And, again, it, it really just kept working. The big sequence in this game that, you know, kind of really turned everything um, on its head and just sort of opened the floodgates, if you will, was uh, Washington was Washington was driving. They had a fourth down. It was like fourth and one. They ran a quick QB sneak. They converted it, uh, but they got called for a uh, delay game, holding, um, false start, something like that, where it pushed them back and it negated the uh, – or no, Harbaugh, Harbaugh called the timeout, excuse me. It was fourth and one, quick QB snap, converted, but Harbaugh called the timeout um, before the play started. So they basically had to go fourth and one again, except this time, instead of uh, going for it, Washington decided to punt it, which was a, a curious decision. Um, Michigan got the ball back. They had their own fourth and one um, on their own 29-yard line, so you know, like 70 yards to go to the end zone, and Harbaugh called a fake punt. Uh, you know, direct snap to um, that I'm, I'm sure it's a running back. Uh, but a direct snap, they're able to get it. Fourth one, obviously big momentum shift, and then the very next play, uh, Blake Corum takes it 67 yards for uh for a touchdown where he was really you know uh, untouched. Um, and it was th- to me that's what you know kind of flipped the game. Um, in in favor of Michigan, not that they weren't really controlling it the whole time but for a while it was you know michigan was up like three to zero and then ten to zero um 
and I believe, let me check the score here, because I thought that Blake Corum touchdown was what made it 10-0. But I could be I could be wrong on that. Scoring plays. So I hate the way the ESPN app is set up. Touchdown. Oh, so that might be it. Um yeah, Blake Horam. Okay, so that's what made it ten to zero um in the first half. And then it was at the end of the first half too. Well, no. Second round Blake Horam. Sorry, it's, it's, it's set up weird. Uh, so that's what made it 10-0, to zero, excuse me. Um, and then, you know, Washington wasn't really able to do anything after that. Michigan scored um, coming out of halftime to make it 17-0, to zero, um, 17-3, 24-3. And, you know, the game was just kind of like that from, from then on. Um, but before then, you know, it was obviously a, a 3 to nothing game Bam, for a – uh, Oh, it's going to – Pissed me off. Um, it was a three nothing game for for a while and kind of back and forth. And you felt like Michigan was playing better, um, but there wasn't a lot to show for it. You know, they had that uh, that goal line stand, uh, where it's f- uh, you know obviously fourth and goal, um, and Haskins probably got into the end zone, but they couldn't you know really confirm it. So they called them down. They gave the ball back to Washington on you know, like the one yard line or something. Um, but, you know, obviously ended up being uh, water under the bridge, not not mattering too much. But, you know, Michigan kind of able to come back from that when they probably felt like they were, you know, cheated out of a touchdown. Um, it was good to see that, you know, that wasn't something that uh, they got they got them down too much um, or, you know, took some of the energy out. Man, you know, on the flip side, side I thought they played with really good energy. Jesus Nobody Christ, why? Um, sorry, I thought it's, it's muted now, so it should be good. Um, on the flip side, I thought Michigan played with really good energy um, as far as just the entire game went. You know, they were flying around the field. They had uh, every seemed like every time they tackled Giles Jackson, they uh, they, they had something to say about it. Um, so it's just a really yeah, it's a really fun game from the the player standpoint, right? If if you're a fan, well, if you're a fan of Michigan, you probably had fun watching. But if you're just a fan of like college football in general, maybe not so much because you know Michigan did run the ball 56 times, so there wasn't so much. Uh, you know, not that there weren't any big plays, but you know when you traditionally think of a big play, you're not thinking you know like a 10 yard run um, or an eight yard run. You're usually thinking the 20, 25 yard pass, um, and you know there was obviously a, a limited, a limited amount of those. Don here says, thank God for the run game because the wrong QB is playing. It'll catch up eventually. Um, I don't think the wrong QB is playing, but you're at some point, Caden McNamara is going to have to do more than he has, than he's had to do throughout the uh, throughout the two games um, so far. You know, he only threw 11 times last game. He threw 15 times today. Um, you know, so 26 times in, in two games definitely isn't um, – it, it's not ideal for, for your team. And, you know, when you get into the midst of Big Ten play, when you're playing teams like Wisconsin or, you know, you're going to be playing a Penn State, um, Michigan State, Ohio State, whoever, that's, you know, that's not going to work. Uh, now, that's not saying that the run game can't be effective. It just won't be, you know, 343 yards effective like it was today. But, you know, one thing that they do like about uh, Cade, and you saw it really with the kind of all of his passes, um, is he he limits his mistakes, right? So he's probably not as talented as uh, as McCarthy is sitting on the sideline, but Cade's not going to make you know stupid passes. He's fine with you know checking the ball down or throwing the ball away when he doesn't have anything. And for a team like Michigan that wants to run the ball um, and wants to control the game, that's you know kind of perfect for for what they need. Um, you know McCarthy will be ready eventually. But if, if, if he's starting this year, it's probably because Cade, you know, just kind of fell off a cliff and was, was really bad um, or because he got hurt. But I would expect uh, Cade to be the starter for the rest of this year just based on the way that, um, that Michigan wants to play. What else? So, yeah, we did a really good job making Washington pay for mistakes. Uh, yeah, they did. You know, um, Washington had or Michigan had that one drive that Washington stopped them on third down, but then the Washington player got flagged for for taunting, uh, which is the stupidest rule in football in both college and the NFL. Um, no, no matter who it goes against, 
right? You can say, oh, you know, you're a Michigan State fan, whatever. But, you know, there's going to be tauntings that cost Michigan. There's going to be tauntings that cost Michigan State. It's, it's going to go both ways, and it is pretty much always a stupid penalty, uh, especially for, you know, something like today where I think the guy just stared at him. You know, he's, he probably said something too. But it's he didn't do anything malicious, right? It's not uh, like that guy in the um, – in the Ole Miss and um, was a Mississippi State game a couple years ago that like pretended to pee on something, like maybe that's where you get into into the taunting bag, but not not here. And it's a dumb rule in the NFL too, and I know they're trying to emphasize it uh, this year. So I hope I hope we don't see it in the Lions game tomorrow, um, but I'm sure we'll see it somewhere across. You know, it's kind of all all avenues of football, and it's it's a really dumb rule, and I hate it. But Michigan did able you know was able to make them pay for that mistake. Which, um, which was your point, and they were really able to make them pay uh, for every everything they did, right? Um, even I thought the fourth and one that we mentioned earlier, where Washington got it, but Harbaugh called the timeout, so they had to redo the play, and Washington ends up punting. To me, that's a mistake. Um, and Michigan was able to make them pay for it by scoring the touchdown the very next drive um, and getting the game to ten to zero. And you know, we saw Washington win score ten points until the very end of the fourth quarter basically um so you know that right there not that it put the game out of reach because 10 to 0 the game is never out of reach but with the way washington was struggling to move the ball uh, a 10 point lead felt a lot safer than you know a normal 10 point lead does if they don't get the passing game going they're not going to beat ohio state plus they have to fix the back end of that defense uh well yeah you definitely have to you know probably outscore ohio state a little bit um or you know, be able to keep up with them scoring. Obviously, you have to outscore a team to beat them. But you know, with Ohio State uh, running the ball 56 times, isn't going to get it done. But if you do run the ball 56 times, 56 times against Ohio State, uh, it's probably because you're you're winning the game, and it goes a lot like the Washington game, which I'm sure Michigan fans would love. Uh, but no, that's not going to that's you know that's not going to happen. Uh, but that's still weeks weeks away. Um, you know, so I was talking to my friends about Ohio State today, um, and obviously this applies to Michigan too, is these two teams are going to be so completely different when they meet, right? Like Ohio State lost today, um, and one of my friends was saying, no, Ohio State, it's a down year, so this might be the year that Michigan's able to get them. Um, I, I don't necessarily know that, that I believe that. I mean, anything can happen, but you know, uh, at the same time. And his point was basically that C.J. Stroud is uh, he's a raw young quarterback, but by the time week 14, 15, whatever it is, rolls around and you got a whole season under your belt, you're, you're not going to be so raw anymore. Um, you know, but neither will Michigan, right? You, just, uh, you mentioned the Michigan defensive backs in your, um, in your comment there. And, you know, that's something that you theoretically should get better um, as, as the season goes along as well. You know, there's probably more room for for a quarterback to get better um, than than you know some of the defensive backs. But uh, you, I I agree with you to a point about the uh, the back end of the defense. You know, um, Washington they threw for a lot of kind of garbage yards late. They did have almost 300 yards passing, uh, and on that on that touchdown, the defense didn't look great. Uh, you know, there was uh, a big play late, but that might have been when Michigan just had their backups in. Um, and the guy on the receiver for Washington made a really nice play. Uh, but there was another play where Giles Jackson was, you know, kind of running free along the middle, and the quarterback just missed him. So it's not necessarily good defense. It just didn't damage Michigan. Um, one thing that, you know, was apparent with Michigan today was Aiden Hutchinson. Was a, oh, my God, what a what a game he had. Uh, he should have probably just been playing quarterback for Washington since he's in the backfield as much as, you know, as, as much as Dylan Morris was. Um, but Washington, let's see if I can get, because I don't know exactly how many stats he had. Where are the defensive stats over here? Oh, my goodness. Come on. Oh, well, I'm on ESPN. They're not giving me the defensive stats right now. Uh, so I could probably look it up somewhere else. Um, but, I mean, if you watch the game and you have eyeballs, you could see that uh, that Aiden Hutchinson had uh, had an outstanding game. He was everywhere. He was making sacks. He was making tackles. He was putting pressure on the quarterback. Um, I even saw him in like coverage one time, uh, where again it was an incomplete pass, 
but he was there with the receiver to where theoretically if the receiver would have caught it, Aiden Hutchinson probably would have tackled him like eight yards away from the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, being dropped back. And it was it was amazing. You know, he's universally regarded as a uh, as a first round pick. You know, if you're watching today, you saw McShay or Mel Kuyper, you know, one of the two had him like 13th overall on their big board. Oh my God, this is going to be the death of me. I'm just going to exit this page. Um, sorry about that. I'm sorry if you guys heard any of that. It's the ESPN running videos that I don't want them to hear. Or that I don't want them to run. Uh, what's the update on Sewell? And maybe out of line, but shouldn't Haskins be uh, the bell cow would bell out? The I mean, the Panay Sewell for the Lions? Um, I, he'll probably be playing at left tackle uh, come Sunday. I apologize if you meant another Sewell. Um, but shouldn't Haskins be the bell cow? With Ronnie Bell out, uh, well, Hel- Haskins is he, he's going to be the bell cow, um, I think already. Uh, but you you would think you know Michigan was out, Michigan wanted to run the ball anyway, like coming into the season. Uh, with Ronnie Bell out, that certainly doesn't help your pass game, and it probably does put a little bit more emphasis on the run. But I don't think. Okay, so let me let me rephrase that. Haskins isn't going to be a bell cow because when you think of bell cow, you're probably thinking of like what Christian McCaffrey is to the Panthers or something, right? Where you're in for um. It's just because Blake Corum is you know too good and too uh, too electric to to ignore. Um, so when you have a guy like Blake Corum on your team. No matter how good the first running back is, you're, it's never you know going to be a, a bell cow situation. Um, you know the the broadcasters today for ESPN talked a lot about like thunder and lightning, um, and that's going to be really what it is for Michigan all year. Um, you know, uh, obviously unless one of the two get hurt, um, and you know you of course don't <laughs> uh, don't don't hope that happens. But if they're both healthy, you know there's not going to be any reason why why one for one game sees like 40 carries and the other only sees 15 or something like that. You know, get the passing on. Um, one thing I did want to talk about while I have uh, while I have you guys here, because I think it's interesting, and I think it's something that Michigan fans could be frustrated about, uh, but probably something that they also understand, which is like just expectations going, you know, throughout the season. Because the first game, Michigan beats Western Michigan. Um, you know, they thrash them, and the... Uh, the narrative coming out of the game is essentially Michigan did what they were supposed to do, but good win. They beat Western. There was nothing there that was like, oh, my God, this is such a worry. The real test is going to come next week when, you know, Washington comes to the big house because Michigan and Western played at 12 o'clock last Saturday. Washington didn't play Montana until 8 o'clock last Saturday. So after the Michigan game, you probably had about five hours of it was a good win, but we got to focus on Washington. That's where we're going to learn, you know, a lot more about our team because Washington was coming into the season, you know, ranked twentieth. Um, you know, they and they looked to be a pretty good team. Then Washington obviously loses to FCS Montana. To you know, now you saw the we talked about it right at the top of here. Um, the the you know the Vegas spread moved in Washington's favor all the way to like giving Michigan a touchdown. Um, and if you guys are just coming in or if you're new, Sports Carnage Podcast, check the link in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link's in the description below. So click that, Apple's Podcast, Spotify, all of that good stuff. Facebook, Twitter, too. You guys know how social media works. Um, so b- back to that, right? Washington loses, and then the odds get swung in Michigan's favor. And then the narrative is, is kind of a lose-lose for Michigan, where if you beat Washington... Yeah, you you should. They look. They just lost to you know an FCS school, right? And then if they lose to Washington, it's well, you know they couldn't even beat an FCS team. So how how the hell are they beating you? Um, so you know when you know regardless if you won or lost, it was a lose lose situation. And now that Michigan uh, punked Washington so bad, what I do, you know, kind of expect is that. Michigan might not be getting a, enough credit for the win, um, you know, like nationally, right? Because we were already all on the fence about Washington, and then Washington went and got blown out again. 
So rather than saying, oh, Michigan did such a great job in blowing out Washington, it's going to be, well, Washington just sucks, or Washington is trash, or Washington is this, Washington is that. Um, And I don't even think necessarily that that is a wrong opinion. I think what you saw from the first two weeks, you could come to a very, you know, a reasonable conclusion that Washington is a very, very bad football team. But I'm just wondering for you guys as Michigan fans, you know, is that something that that frustrates you where now, again, the kind of the goalposts are moving to, well, now to see what this team really is, now we have to wait for, you know, the Wisconsin game. Where, you know, before it was, we got to wait to Washington, Washington lays the egg, and now you got to move back over to Wisconsin. So is that something that you guys think is fair and you understand? Or do you just want, you know, do you just want the credit for, for beating on Washington? Because, you know, it's not, it's not your fault that Washington is a bad football team. Um, you know, you can only play who's in front of you and, and all of that. But I was just curious because uh, I do think it's an interesting situation. And I think there's merit to to both sides of it where, you know, you were supposed to get credit for this win at the beginning of the year. The year doesn't obviously play out like people thought it would. Um, And then now you might not be getting as much credit as you would have. So that's something that I was I was interested in seeing Um, in terms of because someone did mention Ronnie Bell going out. In terms of the passing game, you know, you didn't see anything from the passing game today because they only threw the ball 15 times and only seven of those passes were completed. So we really have no idea what the passing game looks like without Ronnie Bell. Your guess would be it's probably not going to look too good. Um, but we don't know that, right? We don't know who is the next receiver to to step up. Because um, Ronnie Bell, I think himself, was only like a two or, or three-star recruit. Um that kind of you know blossomed uh, while he was at Michigan and was like a diamond in the rough type, as opposed to like a Donovan Peoples Jones, who's a who's a five star coming in, um, and you know has these like really great expectations of him. Um, so you know you don't necessarily know if like there's another one of those on the roster, or is it you know is it going to be a guy that you just expect to uh, to kind of fill that role with Ronnie Bell out? Um, or is it going to be a guy like Ronnie Bell himself who comes up and kind of, uh, you know, kind of grabs the job instead of, um, you know, waits for waits for it to fall to him in the pecking order or something like that. Um, so that's going to be really interesting to see moving forward. Um, again, yeah, I don't necessarily know that there's replacing Ronnie Bell. Uh, it's just how much of a uh, how much uh, how how much of his production can you replace? Right, you had a punt returner today. I, I don't know the young man's name. He did not look very good. He fair called the fair catch for like the first punt of the game that looked um, it looked like he had a lot of space and then he let the ball bounce anyway. Um, and then there's another punt that I, I, I think he dropped it, uh, but he was able to pick it up and not get very many yards. So I would guess he's probably not returning you know punts slash kicks for Michigan um, next week, but not uh you know that's another area where you need to replace bell obviously is um is is on returns michigan will get the next time this weekend michigan will be great this year and they're going to go all the way this year well if (laughs) hey if you believe that man good for you and they they are two and oh so they're undefeated they haven't lost yet and i guess anything can happen in a year uh it's you know probably a bit on more on the optimistic side, but uh, I appreciate where your head's at, right? Because there's a lot of negativity surrounding. Uh, just for the last couple of years, there's been a lot of negativity surrounding the football teams um, in the state in general, whether it's Michigan State, Michigan, or the Lions. And not that it's not well deserved, but uh, you know if if you are optimistic about it, uh, um, you're probably a little bit funner to be around at the uh, at the game parties. I'm fine. Your opinion is just like armpits. Everyone's got two of them. Michigan can turn it around. It's early in the season, so quit calling them out. I mean, I didn't really call them out for for much. I said they dominated the game. Um, I'd I'd be wondering what my opinion of what my opinion, uh, what opinion that I had that you took such um, umbrage with, because I thought I thought I did a good job of giving Michigan credit, and I think. I'm going to be giving them a little bit more credit than uh, than most people, um, you know, at least nationally, right? If you're a Michigan fan, you're probably, you know, uh, you're probably looking at what you thought the ceiling was for the season already. 
um, and either raising that ceiling or thinking that, oh yeah, they're definitely going to hit that now. Um, as opposed to even just two weeks ago where, where maybe you weren't, you know, thinking that or it was best case scenario and now it's just looking a little bit more real. Um, that's, that I think that's kind of what we had. Um, one thing I do actually want to shout out for, for Michigan fans. Um, so this is calling you out who, who, uh, Joe, um, but not, not the team, just the fans in general. So last week we did our Michigan state reaction and we did our Michigan reaction and we posted them both on YouTube at essentially the same time. The Michigan state video got like 10 times as many views as the Michigan one. So the Michigan state video this week, cause they played eight hours ago is obviously already on YouTube, but they only played Youngstown state and with Michigan playing uh, a Washington team that it was a obviously much more anticipated game. I expect this video to do way better numbers than the Michigan state did one. The Michigan state one did, but they're kind of already showing up for that video. So, uh, you sh- if you're watching this on YouTube, share it with your friends. If you've seen it on Facebook and you're kind of catching the back end of it, go to the Sports Carnage YouTube page. Um, subscribe so as soon as the video drops in like the next 30 minutes or so, um, you'll be able to get uh, you'll be able to get that you know notification, um, and then you can watch it and you can beat those dirty Spartans at the uh, at the video viewing game. Um, but with that being said, uh, I am Ryan Griffin. You know that that is all we have to say. Uh, you know, again, great game by Michigan today. Um, Sports Carnage podcast in the Facebook link here if you're watching our Facebook show right now. And if you are watching this on YouTube later, again, links in the description below for our Apple podcast link. Let me make sure I got my fingers in here. The Spotify link, the pod, the Podify, the Podbean link, uh, the Twitter link, as well as the Facebook link. So go, um, go follow us on all of those platforms so that you can see the different content that we post, uh, as well as the YouTube, of course. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. You already know where it is. If you're on Facebook, go to YouTube, type in Sports Carnage, um, and then you know follow us from, from there. Subscribe so that you never miss any of these videos. We are going to be doing one for the Detroit Lions tomorrow. Um, let's, let's hope they win, right? Don't, don't know what to expect, but the NFL season is, is always more fun. And, uh, and there's a lot of fun on those videos. And then as well as every week we're doing the Michigan state and the Michigan videos. And then of course we have, uh, basically weekly podcast dropping. So, uh, listen to all of that and you guys will be able to, uh, of course, you know, voice some more opinions. Um, let us know what you guys want us to hear all of that fun stuff. So thank you all for watching, whether it was on Facebook or the YouTube, uh, we appreciate it. It has been a pleasure as always, and we are gone. Have a good night.